嘛事儿啊？什么事儿？就是那个我们那上来宣联系那个中国黄页，给国家体委做宣传的事儿。什么玩意儿？什么黄什么？中国黄页。中国体育这个名字我们注册下来了，大概里面都空的。办事程序应该你先约，嗯，你要不约的话呢，很难给你做一个很满意的回答。网上现在，迈克尔·乔丹啊，约翰·约翰逊逊，你打开电脑，你都能见到这些人的自己做的 home page， 我怎么怎么的，我怎么的，我们为什么？中国人没有，中国没有一个都没有。失败了也无所谓，我至少把一个概念告诉了别人。我不成功，会有人成功的。When I studied Alibaba, early days were so tough for me. Very few people thought about helping. So today, I'm able to help. First trip to Africa, my impressions were, wow, it's a land full of hope. In Africa, there are so many young people who could be entrepreneurs. They believe what they're doing, and they want to make this thing big. So what if we have Africa Bill Gates? Africa Jack Ma, I realized that I have to do something. The Africa Entrepreneur Prize is giving the inspirations to all the entrepreneurs in Africa. I think we should make them heroes. If the heroes succeed, a lot of people want to be heroes. They can start their dream and change the continent. Tonight's Ten entrepreneurs from the African continent will pitch for a live competition for a share of one million dollars in shared money. When I knew that the finalists would be pitching to Mr. Jackma himself, I said, this is one thing I want to do. So this is an amazing opportunity to deliver our messages. When you're an entrepreneur, you sacrifice so much right, for a vision that maybe others don't even see it. They've never seen somebody like me be successful. If we get the top prize, it's going to revolutionize the company. When you mention that like, people think about poverty, the war, Ebola, this is an opportunity to show a different side of the Liberian story. Give science a chance in Africa. What was killing African women? I'm just the one that is the less afraid of being in front of you guys, honestly. Two billion people still don't have access to clean water. We want to solve the malnutrition problem. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment of truth is here. And the first to place. All I can say is you guys are already winners. You guys have already won. Uh, you know, you get some checks at some point. <laughs> we want you to succeed because we want you to inspire them. When we started that competition, I thought maybe I end in top 20, maybe, but top 10, this was very exciting. I was waiting for that email. <laughs> I kept looking up like, oh. you know, I kept asking the others, were you contacted? Do you know if you're top 10? If they want somebody who's earned the right to dream, they need to select me. <laughs> all right, Christelle Kuzera, um, have a company in Rwanda called Water Access Rwanda, which is all about providing clean drinking water through affordable and scalable means. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Omar Sakra. I'm from Cairo, Egypt. I'm running NAWA Scientific. You can imagine us as a research center that works online. We are trying to get Africa to feed itself on the world. So if you have any question of any of the three countries, <laughs> <laughs> Every one of them is solving an actual problem. They all have successful businesses. I told myself this will be a very intense competition. Almost 10,000 businesses from across Africa. And to have us, a small company from Liberia, being in the top 10, I was really shocked. When I, saw, when I saw the email, I could not believe. Africa's next billionaires. Yeah! Say that again. <laughs>
you know, entrepreneurship sometimes can be a lonely journey, especially when you come from a country like Rwanda that is landlocked. We don't have a long history of trade. I was born four months before the genocide. So I'm actually as old as the new Rwanda is. It's like, you know, we've destroyed as a country, but we're gonna actually build a good country on the continent. But there's still things we need to take care of in our, like, that our generation will need to fix. Water was a big issue in my country. There is 43% of Rwandans who don't really have access to water. People may die because of looking for water. Yeah, so that's the crocodile. Two women have died and one man. So before they used to come and they're getting water here. That's how the crocodile would get people. Water is life, but this water is not life. This is death. Each every day in Africa, 200 million hours that women lose on fetching water, just looking for water. They fetch that water and it's not even clean for their families. If they drink the water without purifying, the kids will get sick, some people dying from diseases like diarrhea. So my business as a social enterprise is looking at providing the infrastructure the treatment of the water before it's delivered to population. I want to win, so I want to use my five minutes to tell them something new, not something they've already heard. If we get the top prize, it's going to revolutionize the company. I'm the only science-based startup that made it to the finalists. It's a great responsibility. We have to be very careful. I do believe Egypt has a lot of bright-minded scientists, but unfortunately they don't have access to advanced scientific research facilities. So what they could do is only they have to outsource their samples and send them to Europe and to the US. hundred dollars, hundred euros per sample. And you usually send like 20, 30 samples. So you can send something between $5,000 to $10,000 on this one project. When I first went to Geneva, entered the lab and see all those high-tech equipment in one place, I felt like, wow, very, very big eyes. I see a window that I have to go through very quickly. I want to start my project before someone else gets the idea. A central hub that works online. If Omar wins, I'd be very, very happy. The Egyptian win, wins this uh, competition. Means I think lot. it means a lot. I don't think five minutes is enough. I've been doing this now for six years. Everything, I want the judges to do everything. <laughs>
The first time I heard about AMPI, finding business heroes was something that appealed to me. I come from a country where there aren't too many young people who are doing entrepreneurship. Many people don't really see business as a viable path. My old school is there. During the war, the entire city was destroyed. It was a very traumatic time because we knew that people were getting killed every day. That we have people shooting guns all over the place. Like now, I, I, cannot, I cannot listen to Firecracker. Kids in other countries were having normal childhoods, normal lives, and we were going through this war where we were struggling to just survive. The difficulties we have in the economy in Liberia now are very much tied to the long years of civil conflict. About 54% of Liberians live on less than $2 a day. There were lots of sad things happening around us in the country, but because we had family members, they tried as best as they could to create a normal environment. How are you doing, Mom? How I was like when I was small. <laughs> My father's aunt is a central figure in our family. She did not go to school, and she used her profits from the business to educate so many people. Through that restaurant there, it, it transformed two or three generations within my family. Oh my, okay, sorry, your chicken again, you oh. Know? I said, that chicken, that all my chicken, what are you kidding? I said, you were paying for it. And he paying. Because he learned, and he more than fine, no complaint. He don't humble nobody. I tell God, thank you. Yes. And so it, it definitely did shape how I view the world. My entire philosophy on doing business is to empower people, to provide opportunities for people to earn money. It's very important for people to have sustainable livelihood opportunities. And so when I started my business, in a way, I saw it as my own contribution to the post-conflict reconstruction effort in Liberia. people in Africa. They can learn from you. They can be inspired by your, your stories. So, that's it. <laughs> when I see these people, I just like to see 20 years ago of me. If I could be able to share the experience that I have, that could be something really useful for them. behind choosing the name of Alibaba. We heard like three stories. <laughs> <laughs> and easy to spell. Right. And A, always start whether you're good or not. A, always, always on the top. Yeah. <laughs> and Mr. Jack Ma was always a um, role model for so many of us, who made it from zero to a huge empire of, of Alibaba. If you're very, very busy people, how do you avoid burnout? I burn out every day. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know how to priority, yes. it's, it's impossible for you to survive. He really talks about his rejections at the beginning and uses that to inspire other entrepreneurs across the world. Uh, Jack said he's burning out all the time, but I've never seen him burn out because in front of his team, 
He is always positive energy. That's very, very important. And uh, when you want to burn out, go burn out uh, in private. Yeah. <laughs> Just like we don't cry, we make competitors cry. <laughs> Jack Ma having the AMP in Africa is symbolic. China 30, 40 years ago was where Africa is today. That is something that inspires me as a young African. It is possible not just to create businesses, but to transform society. Thank you. Thank All right, so see you in the afternoon. Thank you. Okay. That was amazing. Meeting Jack Ma one to one. Excited, energy. Pretty good. Meeting the judges is exciting. Fighting for this. Wow. That thing is in my my eyebrows. Yeah. Anything that's not here right now, it won't happen on the show. So there's nothing I can change. It's good, I just have to go and go through with it. I won this competition called Africa Entrepreneurship Award in 2017, and Mahmoud was one of the winners from the year before 2016. So we actually didn't know each other until ANPI. I think we both are going to win. <laughs> we're going to win. We're going to make it to top three, but I, I, I'll be number one. I do believe they are all doing amazing businesses, but I do believe as well that all African problems can be boiled down into science. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Africa's Business Hero Show. Tonight, Ten entrepreneurs from the African continent will pitch for a live competition for a share of $1 million in shared money. Our contestants shall have 15 minutes to win over the votes, the likes, and the impressions of our judges. Our first judge right here is a Strife Masiwa, founder and executive chairman of Equinite Group, the one and the only Mr. Jack Ma. Miss Kipiku Awoshika. She's the chairman of the First Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Joe Tsai. The executive vice chairman of Aliba Bagu. Please let us welcome our very first contestant, contestant number one. So I'm going to explain today how we intend to craft the global infrastructure for African culture. We are a growing company, a global company from day one. So why do you need the money from here? <laughs> Dropstock is a cloud-based pharmaceutical distribution platform that connects manufacturers of pharmaceutical products to hospitals and pharmacies. You have a great business model. Don't send us down a, a rabbit hole. He occupies strategy, finance, IT, operations, and growth, essentially. It is impossible to operate a company have two CEOs. We want to solve the malnutrition problem. It's a very big problem. And by the way, it's not only about children. Egypt alone has 19 million adults that are obese. Now your question. If you're trying to solve this problem. Is really not your business. Everyone is a rising star. So I'm just thinking how to up the game do better. Please welcome Tammy! Good evening. I would like to show you something. It was the difficult birth of my son that got me obsessed and critically concerned about what was killing African women. When I gave birth to him, it was a very crazy, uh, difficult birth. It was probably the worst day of my life. Basically, a mom gives breath, and once she starts bleeding, she has between 20 minutes and two hours to die. Every hour, 
10 African women bleed to death because their hospital cannot find the critical supply they need to save their lives. LifeBank is a medical distribution company. We help hospitals find the critical supplies they need to save their patients' lives. And we deliver these supplies in the right condition and on time in 45 minutes. And we connect blood banks to blood donors. And we've been able to rescue 6,000 people from death. We've grown by 3x every single year. And we're tackling a big market worth over $30 billion. I would like to show you something. That was LifeBank delivering, making our first delivery with drones in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. So when Temi went up to pitch, that was the first person who pitched that I was like, oh wow, now I'm, I'm scared I'm not gonna win. Her business is engaging. I felt some pressure. I think she's gonna be one of the winners. I think, I think she's just won. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. No matter what happens here today, you are going to go places. Thank you. Transfer blood is perfect enough. 200 billion, 20 million, just to throw this garbage <laughs> away. Most of the entrepreneurs I met, they always say, ah, oh, this market is like $1 trillion. So, so what's the point of you? You are only $5 now. <laughs> right? Mm. When you get accurate numbers, we know you're serious. Mm. Thank you. I don't allow anybody else to distract me. And I'm standing here as one person, but I'm representing thousands of people, people who work for me, people who are our partners, the farmers that we work with. This is an opportunity to show a different side of the Liberian story. This is my mother, and she's the hero for the story I'd like to tell today. And she used almost all of her profits to enroll me into one of the best schools in the country, which laid a solid foundation for my future. When I graduated, I knew that I had to return home to try to contribute in some way to my country's post-war reconstruction effort. You see, in Liberia, palm trees grow everywhere. But unfortunately, most of the smallholder farmers who make palm oil continue to live in poverty for several reasons. Everybody farm food is useful. In Liberia, we have about 29,000 smallholder farmers who make palm oil. But a lot of those farmers remain in poverty. This is the traditional way of making palm oil. It's very hard work. Most farmers don't have access to machines. The same amount of work that it takes eight hours to do by hand, the machine can do the same amount of work in about 30 minutes. And so J-Palm solves what is essentially a last buyer problem. We travel to very rural areas and set up simple machines that enable farmers to produce the oils much more efficiently. They use it to make the oils. We take about 10% of the oils. Well, I'd like to understand your business model a little bit better. So what's your source of revenue? The source of revenue is from the products that we make, from the oil. We have lotions, soaps, basically whatever product you, you have in your bathroom we want to be able to create uh, for skin and hair care. I, I smell very I good. Smell, I feel yeah. good too. Who, who designed this? You know, I, de I designed it. You designed this? Yes. Good. Everybody we have, I made. I made, yeah, for the first time. So now we're almost done. I'm the first person to test all, all the products. I would, I would make them, I would test them out, see how they work for me, and then uh, we'll bring it and share it with, uh, with everybody else here. No, you love it. <laughs> it is difficult for people to accept local products. After the war, it became easier to just import things than, than to produce it because the war eroded almost all of the manufacturing base of Liberia. When we started, there was a perception that made in Liberia products were of inferior quality. 
you have to be able to prove to the customer that we're able to create, not just create good products, but to be able to create good products consistently. When you made the soup? I think we made it in August. August, okay. For every dollar of palm oil sold, compared to the skincare products, the, the difference is about 46 times, so that we can make the business model more solid and more sustainable and impact the lives of, of more farmers. But this business is about marketing and it's about distribution. Okay, who's the customer? Who are you selling to? How many units? Okay, the big brands are not coming to No, no, don't go there. We don't have a lot of time. This is your product. We're selling it to Liberian consumers. Yep. Yes. I'm clear that you are smart enough to secure your supply. I, I, I need you to be sharper about who is your market. Who are you selling this to? His business is stable, uh, but I think the judges have caught some uh, questions. You should be very specific about your business model. To be clear about what is your business. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you've all been holding your breath for this much time. Let's go. I was so scared. I feel like from the jury, maybe they're also not understanding the water sector. Two billion people still don't have access to clean water. And then I wondered, is it still okay to assume that women and children in this century should still work for water. Rather than see this as a problem, I saw this as a market opportunity, a 500 million people market. To do one system, it would take us $25,000. That's a lot of money. So that's why we approach government, NGOs, and investors to help us come up with that money. So we drill underground, we find a water aquifer, and we put pipe inside the borehole. This is the borehole. That's where water is coming from underground. Once the water is filtered, some goes to house connections, and some of it from the tank he can sell from here. We designed a new system that operated using solar pumps uh, in Numa kiosk. So when Inuma water was flowing, I was so full of joy. Family only has to pay $0.1 for every 10 liters. So right now, 47,600 people are using our water points on a regular basis. We're cheaper to establish, we're cheaper to provide the water, we're quicker. It takes us just two weeks to get in the community and give them water. I think businesses actually have a bigger chance to address the water crisis yeah, than governments. But once they decide to do it, mm -hmm. where is your business then? Charity organizations around the world that are trying to get water to the last child in Africa, yeah. who needs water? How does that compete with the sustainability of your business model? Actually, yeah, those are comp competitive in some ways. But what, what's not usually worked around in these models of foreign people coming to do projects in Africa is the long-term sustainability and the operation of this infrastructure. Things break and need money to fix. Okay, community contributes this money and we fix the pump. But every person in the community is individual. And you find that this neighbor says, okay, if my neighbor doesn't contribute, I also don't contribute. So by having a business model around this, we can actually make sure that there is a business person at the pump who keeps it working. I care that my water is being produced and consumed. If something happens in the pipeline, I'm losing money, I'm losing revenue. So I was checking how much free chlorine is in the water. 0.1. Zero is bad, because we need some little bit. We don't want high, but we want some. It's all good. We do a water quality test every month. Being able to test regularly uh, makes them more confident that the water is safe. I know Enuma when I was here, and then I hear people tell me, don't worry, coming some project to bring water from down and then to give it the clean water. And then I was so, so happy.
So you didn't really want to move in a place that doesn't have water, because it's... So you were worried that we're going to come and leave, but then you're like, we can, we stayed, and... It's also very nice for me when I get to step out of the office, go to the field and meet the people who are really helping. My name is Pizera. It means hope. She won. And I live for the day that every African child can access water in their homes. Thank you. I like your confidence. A very simple model. Your competitor you look, sounds like your government building up the water, right? So move faster than the government. Serve better than them. So go ahead. Please give right? me the funding to scale that quickly. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage Umar. So everyone, please fasten your seat belts because we're going on a very fast trip to the future. Ready? Here we go. This is year 2035, and the media has gone crazy because of one piece of news. A team of African scientists have just announced that malaria has become history. But my job tonight is to show you in a very structured way how myself and my team are bringing this dream to reality. Let me show you how we work. We are a core hub of high-tech advanced research equipment operating online and on demand. Basically, this is now an online platform, and then you choose the test you want to carry out. The courier will come to you, collect the samples, bring to us, we do the analysis, we send you the results back online. We went through a lot of obstacles, in the beginning, people were not still trusting us because we were the first to do so. We had to build trust. Here we have the case of a little bit angry customer, and she was not happy with the results. So we asked her and sent one more sample, which is a standard. You know, we don't know. And in fact, I will do one sample for free. When you check the standard sample and say, aha, this one is correct. This means the whole are correct. Nermeen is a regular customer. My major field is working on breast cancer. At this time, we have only one sample, and we need to make sure how pure it is. Ensure that we have correctly prepared our chemical compounds. A lot of researchers who tend to use the same machines, so it would take a very long time. Access to them are not as easy as what you find here in Nawa. And we're going to see results on positive impact. Nice. Okay. I'm very happy that results are perfect. Thank you. <laughs> this is what we're looking for. Thank you. And I think it's nice because it only took like less than 10 minutes. The actual acquisition took 30 seconds. This is not very common, of course. And luckily, we have the correct compound and the pure compound. So my molecules hopefully can help fight this big battle of breast cancer in women. Our clients love us. Through our journey, we analyze more than 25,000 samples coming from nine countries. And guess what? We're doing this at 70% gross margin, and we are very hard to compete with because we're very much know-how based. We say you have uh, no competitors right now, but when you, if you have a 70% of margin, competitors will come. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. 100% agree. China. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish the competitors from China can do things like you supporting more science in Africa. Yeah. Now, Mr. Jackba, still known as Professor Ma in China, you have once been a teacher, you believe in education, you believe in science, dear judges, tonight, Give science a chance in Africa. Thank you so much. Great presentation. Our 10 contestants are going to be shortlisted to three finalists.
The moment of truth is here. Three contestants will be the next round. One is Christiana Quizella. Yes, I think she really deserves a big Thank round you. of applause. Stop, stop, please stay uh, forward. And another one is Tammy Diwa. And next is uh... My heartbeats went out of the roof because there was one shot left. When I gave my pitch, I definitely thought that I would be in the top three. Alma Sakura. Congratulations! Uh, everybody is a winner today. I see on the stage it says Africa's business heroes. And I looked up the definition of heroes. Is a hero is a person who is a mire for their courage. I thought I thought it was definitely possible for us to make it to the top three. Once the results came out, I, I knew that, okay, yes, well, we didn't make it this time. Maybe another time. My final contestants, the next round will dictate whether either one of you will walk away with 100,000 US dollars, 150,000 US dollars, 250,000 US dollars, Please show us the number in which you are appearing. Number one, Umar. When I decided to go back to Egypt, everyone was telling me, do not come now. In Middle East and Africa, that has no previous success stories of life science companies like ourselves. It wasn't an easy decision for my family. I wasn't so sure about the process of my project. Can we make enough money to sustain the whole family? I don't believe in luck, I believe in hard work. I think our very first contestant is ready. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back on stage contestant number one. Since I'm sitting with, on this particular table with great people, can each one of you give me one advice that I will mark it by heart and I will remember it for 10 years? I want you to keep the skill and the scope before you, but to build in stages so that you can build sustainably and successfully for the long term. As you build, you take into account the diversity of Africa and the world. This core to your business is skills. Uh, do you have family, are you married or? Yes, my wife is here and I have four kids already. Oh. <laughs> By the way, my wife is a scientist. She holds a PhD in chemistry as well. Wow. <laughs> So my advice to you is the road of entrepreneurship is going to be tough as you scale your business. Uh, but what you shouldn't forget is you take care of your family. Because if your family is happy, then they will support you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay? May I? And my advice, uh, simple but difficult, stay focused. On the way, be an entrepreneur. Especially when you go to be successful, you have a lot of attraction, a lot of things waiting for you. Stay focused. People love to see heroes, but most of the hero died. You have to be hero at the end of your journey. Sustainability, focus, family, and diversity. So I got my lesson. When I was waiting to go up for round two, that was my most nervous moment. It was, I had no idea what's gonna happen. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage, Christelle. I have a question. If you were one of the judges among the top 10, who are the three people you would pick up? <laughs> That's good, 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 good. This is gonna out me to yeah, everybody This is else. the way that you're high people. <laughs> My personal pick actually coming into the competition was Mahmoud because he has quite a lot of potential, creating value where previously it was non-value. So how old are you now? I'm now 25. Wow. Wow. Oh. Thank you. When I started my first business, I was 25. So I'm really you. So one thing I want you to never forget, never apologize to anybody for your age. Thank you. People will say, oh, you're too wise for your age. And I'm like, well, there is no rule book that says a person my age can't be doing what I'm doing. Being the youngest person, I know people have doubts, but nobody knew what I'm actually suffering from. Naguaz. My name is Christelle Quizera. I am from Rwanda. You can see all my spots. In 2011, so that's when I was 17, my whole skin would just come off easily. It's very painful. Some days I was too weak to even get out of bed and get food. And then the diagnosis was that I had something called pemphigus foliaceus. But it's a very rare autoimmune illness. I thought I was about to die. So every time I went to sleep, I would be like, well, maybe this is my last day, you know? So on New Year's, because, so my birthday is on December 8th. So I thought, okay, it's my birthday. I'm turning 18, right? Perfect time to die, but I didn't die. <laughs> so this was when I was taking professional pictures and the photographer asked me, can you remove your jacket? Because I always covered my arms. And I'm like, no, 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 like, I, I don't want to. I don't want to show, you know, my scars. But now I, you know, I've realized a big, big lesson that if you have a scar, it means you survived. I, I think I still look very pretty in the pictures. It's created more empathy in me that when I see people suffering these days, I feel for, like I know what that feels like. That gives me courage to act, to be like, okay, then I can give you the solution. I don't want to win just because I'm the youngest. I want to win because I'm the best. When you get successful so early, there are a lot of challenges. Study the failures, not because you will avoid them. One day you meet these problems, you know how to face it. When you are 50 years old, you still have this passion. That's called a success. Thank you. Please, let's welcome our very final finalist, Temi. So I'm going to start with my first question. I have an amazing team. They are all believers. But I think one thing I struggle with is how do we build a platform where they can co-own the business? First, they need to work with good bosses and good colleagues. Mm. I think that is very, very important. The number one reason for employees leaving is because they don't like their supervisor. Mm. For the first 10 years, Alibaba was very difficult to hire people because nobody trusts us. <laughs> I never promised that you will be rich, you'll be promoted, I promise you have a terrible life in this company. Mm -hmm. And very important for you to keep them is they see the hope of the company. Best product of Alibaba is Alibaba employees. I think if my people do not change, my products will never change. Mm -hmm. my Sitting there on stage with four of the most incredible people in the world the and give me advice on my business, going. that is something that money cannot buy. I thought I was going to win, but you know, you're not really sure, but it's like, you know, you have to believe it, and then, you know. Uh, uh, her, so we trust better. There is water in blood. 
PEMI solving problem of delivery of me medical equipment. This is not in whole Africa, so, but I'm solving a problem that is 100% in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment of truth has arrived. Mr. Ma, who is our third winner for tonight? Now the third place. I think I'm gonna win. I did my best. Everyone cheered up for me. I thought I was number three. Is Christiana Pizarra. I was a prize winner, ended up being number three, which means I lost the last round. And uh, the second place. Then they called the third person. I was like, oh, okay, second, second is good, second is good. Is Alma. <laughs> and the first place, Tammy Jiwa. You did a great, great job. I think I have more confidence in Africa, more confidence in the young people and entrepreneurs. This is the first time we have this program and we will continue to do it to inspire, support and enable Africa young people and entrepreneurs. We want to inspire the whole young entrepreneurs in Africa, not the top one. Going back and thinking, I made it to the second place out of 10,000 contestants. This has been a long journey. The main meaning and message of this competition is inspiration. You have great problems, but you can convert those into opportunities. This money, we're gonna use it to scale Life Bank, grow the business, employ people, and really show that you can solve problems with the power of business. <laughs> I hoped to be number one, but number three is not too bad either. <laughs> and from competitions like this, like the Netpreneur Prize, having billionaires be like, we believe in these guys, it's gonna attract more um, investment our way. I feel a little sad that we didn't win, but uh, I think the real win for me was being able to get up on the stage and tell the story as truthfully and as passionately as I can. It's not going to end after this competition. After this competition, whether I win or not, I'm still going to go back home to my company and, and run my company. My goal is that within the next 10 years, 29,000 smallholder farmers in Liberia who make palm oil should be able to have access to machines. We should have a kind of economy that supports every person so that regardless of what your dream is, you should be able to have the opportunity to make that dream come to reality. I do believe we will be empowering uh, life sciences all over the continent, that we are changing the face of research in Africa. When I see the other entrepreneurs, I honestly feel proud of being an African in this moment, in this time. So I feel like I'm part of a big generation that's gonna change Africa. That's already changing Africa.
African business, African. Hero, hey. I'm an African business, African. Hero, hey. And so therefore, the farmers cannot make you know, much like much much it's, it's really hard. <laughs> This show brings together entrepreneurs from all over Africa. But tonight we're going to see who is the best of the best. So join me as I introduce the contestants. Contestants number one, Kevin from Rwanda. Contestant number two, Temi from Nigeria. Make the beat go. Oh, yeah. 